I'm Kusha Karvandi, and you're listening to Exerscribe Radio, the source for biohacking your health to reach your full potential. I created Exerscribe to provide people with a roadmap to working out. With our new workout app, you can get a custom workout program that adapts your workouts to your body type, goals, sleep quality, stress levels, and personal preferences. With live chat support, our workout app has become so comprehensive some call it a personal trainer in your pocket. Our users are seeing over 90% success rates with their goals because we take the neural approach to fitness, meaning we integrate movements and exercises that recalibrate your brain and body to prime you for rapid strength gains and fat loss. Check out the Exoscribe workout app in the iTunes App Store today. In today's podcast, I interview Keith Baxter. Keith is one of the smartest biohackers I know who shares his insights and experiences today on biohacking different aspects of health, including brain optimization, IQ, sleep, nutrition, and exercise. Okay, everyone, we're here on Extra Scribe Radio with biohacker extraordinaire, Keith Baxter. Welcome, Keith. Hey, bud. How are you doing? Good, good. Welcome to Extra Scribe Radio. Thanks for joining us today. Man, I am, uh, I'm just happy to be here. It's always an honor and a pleasure. So, uh, hey, if we get to spread the word, let's, uh, let's do this. Awesome. So one thing I really like to do just to get started is to get the audience to get a little bit about, get to know a little bit about you and your background. Yeah, so uh, it might it may be a little different. Uh, I didn't come from a uh, health practitioner world. I was an, I've been an entrepreneur for about fifteen years, and uh, I would say seven years ago or so, I uh, was getting overweight, uh, was out of shape, and said I have to get feeling. I have to feel better. Well, one of the things that I've always done with um, my business is I've always sought out the best people that I could possibly find in order to take my business to the next level. And so I applied that same thing to uh, the fitness world. I said, well, I could either go to Gold's where I work out and hire a personal trainer there. uh, And there's a good chance I probably are at this time or at that time already knew more than they knew. uh, Or I could seek out somebody that really had some knowledge. And so that's what I did. And I found a guy that Oh my God, he took me down a rabbit hole that I am still going down today. So it all started off with just, you know, him writing up programs and dietary regimens for me and just going over basic stuff. And then we started getting into the tech and we started getting into, you know, blood work and we started getting into DNA analysis and we started getting into quantifying every aspect of my life. And uh, I loved it. So from there, it just became a passion. And while you know I'm still an entrepreneur and still have my business, I am slowly transitioning a lot of the people that follow me into that same mindset because it's, uh, I tell you what, man, at 43 years old, I'm lean, I feel great, uh, and it's it just as, as a matter of, of reference, just hold on a second. I'm going to show you this since we're on video. Uh, just yesterday, one of the guys in my mastermind sent me the Emoda VEG uh, system. The, this is, it's a EEG tech that I could put on my head and measure my brain waves real time and uh, you know, realize that throughout the day of wearing this thing, uh, I live in alpha theta. I hardly ever even active in beta, which is strange. Uh, but it also accounts for a lot of creativity that that I experience. Uh, but this is just it, man. I mean, who else is going to sit there with an EEG on their head while they're working just so they can <laughs> see how you know how they operate? So that's uh, that's where I'm coming from. That's awesome. So tell me about these brain waves. What what happens at these different brain waves? Yeah. So you know, most people function normally in beta. That that's where everybody's living. Uh, Alpha is he starts the creativity process. Uh, it's, it's a it's a it's a different cycle, um, and then you get into theta, and then you get into delta, and then you get into gamma. Delta is where you're sleeping. Theta is where a lot of deep healing work comes from, uh, and then gamma is just you're beyond. I mean, you, there is no consciousness in gamma for the most part. Uh, if you can function in alpha, which is where I train myself to function on a, on a pretty much on a day to day basis through uh, I've also become 
uh, certified in neurofeedback technologies. I have uh, two neurofeedback machines here in my office. Uh, and so I work on keeping myself uh, in alpha. That's where genius, if you know, if somebody, if I had to explain it, that's where genius comes from. Uh, and then when you can slip into the theta, but in a conscious theta state, because most people are sleeping when they hit theta, uh, you can really get into some serious body work. Um, so that that's the layman's without getting too scientific <laughs> about it. That's that's the layman's uh, approach to it. So what's this whole concept of uh, biohacking all about? Because you know I'm I'm a big proponent of it, but I think that it's still a little nebulous for most people out there. So how would you describe it? Yeah, I would call it uh, optimization. You know, the word hacking is great when we're talking. We're coming from a computer background, Silicon Valley types. Uh, understand the word hacking as a way of optimizing code uh, is to get to, from point A to point B quicker, more efficiently and faster. Uh, but the real world doesn't understand that. They look at hacking as being a negative and being, you know, shortcuts, uh, you know, or bad. And so a lot of times when I'm explaining this to, to people, I just tell them I, I am an optimization specialist. I want to be I, I am in better shape than probably 99% of 19-year-olds because I've taken uh, the approach of better, faster, more efficient steps in my training uh, than just about anybody else. My, a great example for you. My wife is an Ironman athlete. You know, it's a 2.4-mile two two swim followed by a 112-mile bike ride followed by a 26.2-mile run. And... When I explain these concepts to her, it's foreign. It's a foreign concept to her. You know, she follows her coach's advice, who's still very old school. And when I explain a better way of doing it to her, it seems like magic, I guess, because, you know, we're really, you know, you start with your mind, you start with your brain, you optimize that. And then, you know, through your thought processes and through a better way of thinking, you know, you move into more uh, holistic health type stuff. Uh, you move into, in my world anyway, uh, taking nootropics, which a lot of people are opposed to using drugs. Uh, but we've even developed natural nootropics that, uh, you know, that my company even sells. So, you know, I start with the brain. I move into the body. And then I also work on uh, the emotions, spirituality. I have applied the biohacking principles to every aspect of my life. My relationships, man, I tell you what, if you and I had had this conversation five years ago, uh, I came, you know, I was in eight years in the military, uh, was a staff sergeant, uh, dealt with a lot of people that, you know, you had to be forceful with to, to get your point across. So I had kids. You know, when they wouldn't behave, a lot of those staff sergeant tendencies would come out and uh, was just grumpy, man. I was a grumpy dude. Uh, that's I could look back and say I was a grumpy guy. And today, just through the different biohacking technologies, just feeling good, man, just being vibrant. Um, it's, you know, relaxed is an understatement in just about every situation. I'm sure if somebody pulled a gun on me, they, you know, that would be a different story. But, you know, you know, my kids could talk back to me and rather than overreacting and pop them on, popping them on the butt or something, I, uh, you know, I try to figure out why they're feeling as bad as they are. And uh, one of the neat things is that uh, my wife has embraced some of the superfoods that I'm into. So uh, we try to feed those to the kids. They're very picky eaters. So as a parent, we do what we can to even biohack our children. Uh, I get them to do neurofeedback, dynamical neurofeedback, which is a very non-invasive neurofeedback system. Uh, I get them to do that to help them with their you know, possible temper tantrums, their grades, their focus. Uh, and then we try to integrate some superfood technologies in as far as we can to you know, optimize their health. So. That's awesome. So tell me a little more about the, the alpha brain waves. You said that's kind of where the genius comes from. What are some biohacks that somebody could do to get themselves in that state more often? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually the, probably the most prevalent way to do this and the easiest way to do this is through meditation. Uh, now, I could say meditation and a lot of people will say, well, that's, you know, what is it? Sit with my cro legs crossed, my fingers, you know, 
um, you know, and you know, just making some silly noises and closing my eyes and concentrating on a single spot. Sure, you can do that. That that's not an issue. Or uh, you could be a little more efficient with it and use something like binaural beats. Uh, and it's just an audio technology that's embedded within music. So it's very non-invasive. It's very passive. Oftentimes, you just put headphones on and you listen to it. Well, the next step beyond that may be light and sound devices where you have glasses on that flicker at a certain speed uh, and follow the brain and just entrains your, your vision uh, and takes you to another place. And you know, that can vary within a minute, take you to, uh, to an alpha state. Uh, or you can train yourself for long-term uh, optimization through neurofeedback technologies, which is the path that I've chosen. Uh, so I use two systems. I use one called the Neuroptimal. I actually became certified in that. So if I ever wanted to stop being an entrepreneur or take that into uh, private practice, I could, uh, but I don't. So that, and then I have another one called the P. Roshi 2, which takes your brain, and this gets really advanced and it really woo, uh, but it takes your brain to a zero state. It resets your brain when you do that. So, it, you know, and I'm using this in terms of computer technologies, uh, which a lot of people can understand. So oftentimes, you know, your computer's slow, it's not working as efficiently as it should. Uh, and what do you do? You oftentimes, you know, you reset the memory by re rebooting the computer. That's what P. Roshi does. So P. Roshi uh, reboots your brain, and it is a experience that I think everybody should experience. And then, if you want to go, I mean, heck, we're on a biohacking show, so let's just bring it out in the open and talk about it. Uh, we could get into the spirit medicines, things like ayahuasca. Uh, and I'm not opposed to that whatsoever. I don't do drugs. I choose not to do drugs, but I don't even I don't even look at the the, the medicines like that as drugs, like other people might. So DMT, uh, ayahuasca, and those sorts of uh, medicines are another way to heal yourself and to allow you to work in a much more efficient state if you've allowed to do that for you. So uh, I've had a lot of friends who've gone to Peru to Thailand and various other places. It's illegal here in the, in the United States uh, where I'm at currently. Uh, so, you know, I can't recommend it here, but if you do go to Peru, Hey, uh, give it a shot. So what about some of your more modern day stuff like marijuana? I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs that I've seen out there surprisingly who have that, you know, that creative genius with ideas who smoke pot. It seems like almost every day, which is kind of crazy to me. Yeah. I, I don't have, I, I don't have an opinion on uh, pot one way or the other. I personally don't enjoy it. I, I like to be in control of my faculties. With that being said, I don't really care for alcohol either. So That's just a personal choice. Um, if somebody is able to work more efficiently uh, and, you know, oftentimes you have to think, somebody's past may have been fairly traumatic. And, you know, there's a lot of times, even in my past, uh, that having two or three beers or a couple shots in the evening would just help de-stress me, uh, help relieve muscle tension, and allow me to function better the next day without carrying a lot of that over. Is that right or wrong? You know, I am going to be the first person to say that it's an individual choice. I know what it does to me, and it's not necessarily the best thing for me. Uh, but I am not going to be one of these Nazi guys that goes around and says, everybody's going to hell that smokes pot, and everybody that that drinks is going to be driving and killing 32 kids. That's not me. So, you know, if you choose to do it and it legitimately helps you and makes you feel better, then, you know, rock on, man. <laughs> you know? Tell me a little bit more about ayahuasca. You know, I never really had heard about this thing before until more recently. And I had heard something crazy that like uh, a lot of companies, a lot of tech companies like Apple send their senior executives to Peru to do ayahuasca trips. Yeah, and it's actually very. Here's another uh, thing. There's a lot of the mixed martial artists, arts uh, fighters in the UFC. While I guess it's not technically you know set out in the open, but you know a lot of them go through the ayahuasca experiences as well. Uh, I have not done it. Okay, so I am only speaking from people that have stayed at my house, who have gone through the experience and explained it to me in depth as well as research that I've done online. So I have to get that out in the open. I am not an expert on it, uh, but what I am is somebody that will do it at some point in time in the next year. Uh, I, I have a calling. I have a, something inside me is tugging me to do it. Uh, and oftentimes, uh, those that go through it have miraculous 
mental, spiritual, and physical healings. Um, and with that being said, you know, there's some people that have, you know, stage four cancer that think that they're going to be, you know, the cancer is going to go away by them doing it. And God bless them for trying, because I think that if I was in that stage, I would try everything too. Uh, but it's not, I, I, you know, like anything, there's no absolute to anything. So it's, uh, you know, but a lot of people do do it. It's, uh, you know, it's done in Peru in the Amazon. And it's, uh, from what I understand, it's the, uh, combination of several different barks uh, made up into a tea that's brewed for a very long period of time. And depending on how far you want to go with it uh, is how much the, uh, the shaman uh, gives, you know, gives to you. So uh, it's oftentimes followed by nausea, uh, diarrhea in some cases, if we want to get, you know, real technical about it. And then uh, oftentimes, at least the, the experiences that my friends have had, they hear a pop and they are out of this plane of existence. So, uh, you know, I've done mushrooms. I've done LSD in high school. Uh, the experiences that they have with this is far different than any any chemical or even, uh, you know, a mushroom-based hallucin hallucination. Uh, these guys talk about not even realizing the existence that they're in. So it's not as if they're standing outside their body looking at themselves. They're just gone. They are in another realm, another universe, another place. And that to me is fascinating because what they experience there to them is very, very real. As real as if you were standing next to me and you and I were having a conversation. Not even, you know, uh, the, the function of Skype, like what we're doing now. It's more like there's somebody standing next to you, to you and you're having a conversation with them. So it's uh, some pretty cool stuff. That's really interesting. What are some of your favorite biohacks? Um, what are some of my favorite? You know, it's, it's, it's a funny question because it's it's integrated into my and just into my being. Um, I would say that uh, I like to to I like to see what everything that I put into me in one way or another how it affects me. So the uh, the Emoto VEG, it's the newest thing that I have. Uh, so that's exciting to me right now, and I've been playing with it all day. I have a microcurrent technology that uh, is used for uh, speeding up the healing process of my muscles and uh, a cellular detoxification, and it's called uh, uh, the body – what's it called? The, the body uh, – oh, my gosh. It's escaping me. Maybe I need to take some more nootropics. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the body charger. That's what it's called, the body charger. Uh, and that's about a thousand dollar device, uh, and it has uh, silver line sponges that wrap around your ankles with some uh, nano current uh, electrodes that just pump, you know, very, 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 very low voltage electricity into you. Uh, so that's that's a fa favorite of mine. Uh, I have uh, my gosh, I have my closet is just full of tech, the neurofeedback stuff. So I have taken my interest in biohacking to what I call brain hacking or brain optimization. I've even got a whole blog at uh, brain hackers cookbook just for brain hacking. So I really like my mind. I read things like this. Let me just show you the book that I'm currently reading. Uh, Supercharge your brain. This, this is the kind of stuff that I read for pleasure just because I really love brain health. We just launched a new supplement in my company uh, this is the first bottle called Brain, Optim uh, Brain Optimizer. So, I mean, this is this is where this. That's why I enjoy the neurofeedback. That's why I enjoy the uh, the EEG. Um, I like to optimize my mind. I have when I started all this, I had an IQ of one thirty two, which is decent. It's you know nothing spectacular, but it's it's average to slightly above average. Uh, and I've hit uh, about one forty in the last serious IQ test. So. I've, I've hacked my brain up to, you know, eight points, you know, forget. I, I say take it for what it's worth because I don't necessarily trust IQ tests. I think they can all be manipulated, but uh, it is what it is, I guess. So that I also enjoy the Rastamps. I'll show you uh, just sitting here at my desk. Um, I love, and yes, these are, you know, this is technically a drug. It's a, it's a Rastam family of drugs. 
Um, and I love uh, an anaracetam choline mix. Uh, it brings out a euphoria-based focus and concentration effect. Uh, and when I say that it, it's illegal to sell in encapsulated form, but it's not illegal to sell in raw powder form. So, you know, and it's all the efficacy of it has been proven to be non-toxic. So, uh, and the studies have gone on with paracetam, one of the other racetams for about 40 years. So I, I'm okay with taking it. I, I don't, you know, I don't feel too bad about it because it's, uh, like I said, you know, 40 year study and there hasn't been any toxic side effects to it. So of course I might be the first person that has a toxic side effect. So who knows? <laughs> so this is kind of like the, the limitless that like, uh, like Bradley Cooper used in that movie. Uh, as a matter of fact, it could be considered that. And I think that over time it does have a compounding effect. Uh, I cycle it. Uh, I mainly, so I said that, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, so I write what's called a lot of sales copy. I write a lot of sales copy for my business. And so on the days that I have to focus and really put in a lot of work uh, on writing copy, that's, those are the days that I usually take. I definitely take it those days. Uh, do I, I don't, if I'm, if it's a mundane task style day and I'm just talking to my employees and, you know, not really things I don't, where focus isn't necessarily a big issue. Uh, I don't take it on those days, uh, nor do I take it on the weekends. That's my kid's time. Uh, so I don't take it on the weekends. And if I take it, it's oftentimes early in the morning. So I'm not dealing with the effects of it in the afternoon. Uh, one of the things that is oftentimes combined with these mixes is caffeine. And if you're sensitive to caffeine, like I am, and I take, if I drink caffeine after say one in the afternoon, I'm not sleeping until midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And you're talking to a guy that likes to be asleep between nine thirty and ten, and wake up between four thirty and five thirty. So that doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get this stuff? Uh, so you could heck, you can really just about anywhere. If you just type in anaracetam uh, into Google, you're going to find a thousand places to sell it. So okay. I get my, I get mine. I use a company called Web Nutrients, uh, webnutrients.com. What's the other? There's another one that has a great mix. Uh, I've only ordered from them once, and it was good, uh, but their name escapes me. Something like uh, Brain Booster or something like that. And then, of course, like I said, you know, we formulated our own uh, supplement. So I'll, you know, I've taken this. It doesn't have the same effect as, as, a, as a Rastam. It's not a drug. It's herbal-based. Uh, but... One of the hacks is, you know, we tell people for safety reasons to only take one pill a day, uh, but I, I'll take three pills so I can actually feel a fairly strong effect from it. So uh, that's another thing. That's another thing that we'll, I'd like to pass along is that when you're taking supplements, most supplements, the recommended dose on the bottle is the minimum dose for efficacy. Okay. So... Does that mean that it's the optimal dose for you and for achieving your desired outcome? Very rarely is it. So if you're taking enzymes or probiotics uh, or brain booster or whatever it is, I always up the dose because I want to see how far I could go before it's either one toxic to me, which I'll know fairly quickly, uh, or uh, I'm hitting my desired outcome for that specific uh, that thing. So like my enzymes, I... You know, most enzyme, any enzyme bottle, most enzymes suck, mind you. But if you can find a good one, um, they'll tell you to take two pills a day or two pills with meals. I'll take upwards of 10, peel, 10 pills at a time. Uh, so it's, you know, I'm mass uh, or in mass. I use mass enzymes, but uh, I hyperdose uh, enzymes. So that's that's one thing, especially if, if your diet's not as clean as you want it to be or uh, you're traveling. Hyperdosing enzymes is nothing but a positive health benefit. So, uh, also with probiotics, it says you know most things will say take probiotics once a day, one pill. Uh, oftentimes, the probiotic that I take, I take two pills in the morning and two at night. Uh, as sick as this may sound, clean co and a proper working colon health is absolutely essential. Gut health on down. Is essential. I mean, if you need to be able to digest your food, you need to be able to eliminate your food. And I would say 99.9% .9 of the world has an under optimized gut health.
So mm -hmm. I agree 100%. Where do you get a lot of this information from? Um, I have surrounded myself with, and it's just when you have it, it's. I think we can all relate to this. When you have an interest in something, uh, people gravitate to you if you have a desire to listen to them. Everybody wants to be listened to. I love when somebody that's smarter than me, which is a whole lot of people, that start talking about this stuff. I am a sponge. If they need to cry on my shoulder and talk to me for five hours about it, they can do it. I love learning this stuff. It's a passion. I think that that passion comes through, especially when I'm, uh, you know, listening to these guys because, you know, sometimes I'm taking notes. I'm sometimes I'm recording small bits of their conversation just so I can replay it and, and understand and research it. Uh, I'm an avid researcher. I'm an avid buyer. I have no, you know, I have no qualms about buying them fifty books and reading them all just so I can learn that topic. And that's, uh, that's what I do. I don't passively do anything. Uh, if I want to excel at something, I, I bury myself in it. So what is it specifically about biohacking that you're most passionate about? It's the, the meta, the meta overview of that would be that, uh, I'm a 43 year old man and I was starting in my late 30s to feel like a 60-year-old man. I did not want to feel bad anymore. I wanted to feel good. And so my thought was is I could go the traditional route and do what everybody else does to try to feel better. Or I could speed up the process, go further, faster, and better. And that's what I did in business. That's the, the same approach that I took here. So... Um, it's just led to, I mean, man, when you can hook electrodes up to you, there, there's a, uh, I think it's arc, is it the AR, ARP or ARC? It, anyway, it, it's electrical stimulation. So you have devices like a, it's called a complex device. And you used to see, uh, the electrical stimulation devices back in the seventies with Bruce Lee, he'd stick these little electrodes up to him. And while he was working at it, shock the crap out of him and, you know, it'd build up his chest or whatever. Uh, well, in you know, 2014, the dominant player in that world is called Compex. Well, there is a technology well light years beyond Compex that the average person can't buy. And it's either ARP or ARC. I think it's ARP, A-R-P. Uh, and there's only a few centers around the country that, that uh, performs this. But basically what, it's do, what it does is it rehabilitates your muscles in a way that not only rejuvenates them, but takes them beyond where they were beforehand. So it's a, uh, it's fascinating tech. So stuff like that just drives, I just love it. So uh, for instance, my wife, she does about an 11 to 12 hour Ironman. And, you know, if she wants to go sub 10 hours and she's 39 years old, if she wants to go sub 10 hours, this is a technology that will help her do that. She just has to be sold on it. Uh, it's extraordinarily painful for anybody that goes through it. I mean, you're putting 5,000 cycles. Basically, it's the equivalent of doing 5,000 cycles of reps uh, per minute. I think it's per minute or something. So it's it's very painful from what I understand. Uh, but they have a center in Austin. I'm in the Houston area. Austin's about three hours from me. Uh, and at the, I run a mastermind group for entrepreneurs. And uh, one of the uh, the guys that actually the two guys uh, that own the system and perform it for people and athletes are in Austin, and they spoke at my last mastermind. So uh, it's on my to do list to get out there and get shocked. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. What are, what have been some of your greatest obstacles with your own health and fitness? Um, dedication at times. Uh, you know, we all have patterns that uh, like to creep back into our lives. You know, sometimes, you know, like I said earlier, some people use alcohol and drugs to release. Uh, some people, myself included, and especially more now uh, these days, is sometimes you don't necessarily, especially if I'm having a bad day, uh, which isn't often, but when it happens, I find myself falling into a pattern of wanting a release. And for me, a release would be eating something other than what I should be eating. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I have trained myself to do is 
I try not to eat carbs after 12 or after after 12 o'clock. If I was working out at night, I wouldn't eat carbs for the day and then I'd just eat a carb meal after uh, my workout at night. But I try, but I work out at 8 o'clock in the morning. So I try not to eat any carbs after, after 12. So one of the things that I've done uh, and I've trained myself to do on the days that I'm having a, a bad day and instead of eating, you know, a steak and potato and, you know, a big piece of cake or, you know, some... Uh, banana pudding afterwards. I'll just go get a big ass steak. I'll throw it on the grill, and that satiates me to the point where I don't have to eat all the other crap. Uh, but in the past, I mean, that would be my downfall. Was man, you give a, my, especially my mom, man. I so I, for being from Southeast Texas, there's two things that you can count on from any family that's had multiple generations here: good banana pudding and gumbo. And growing up on both of them, I love, love, love gumbo. I can't, I don't need it anymore, man. Although I do every now and then, if I find somebody that has made some good gumbo, I will slip in a bowl or two. So don't get me wrong on that. But uh, I, I don't cook it in my in my kitchen anymore, unfortunately. But uh, oh man, they're making me hungry thinking about gumbo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think the future of health and fitness looks like then? I think it all comes down to optimization. I think that pretty soon, and you're especially seeing in the in the diet world, people are realizing there is a better way to do to work out. There's a better way to work out. There's a better way to eat. Uh, just look in the '90s, in the 1990s, even in the early 2000s, there was a diet a week. Uh, you know the the South Beach diet, the you know the cabbage diet, the Mediterranean diet. You name it, there was a diet and you know, they all claim to have the best macronutrient profiles. They all claim to be the best thing for weight loss. But what people are now realizing is that weight loss can be a side effect from health optimization. So, you know, you're seeing more and more diets converging into essentially the same thing. You know, intermittent fasting, have a specific period of time throughout the day that you eat, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's easy. I mean, just don't eat after five and don't eat before 10. You know, six liters of water a day. That sounds like a lot, but you know what? You feel pretty freaking good when you're drinking six liters of water a day, upgrading your water to structured water. So there can be some debate in this. I don't drink structured water with food, but I do drink it between meals. Uh, so uh, ultimate hydration, heck, you've seen me throughout this interview drinking on my water. I'm constantly sipping water. Um, Eating carbs uh, directly after and only directly after your workout and sometimes during your workout. Uh, but other than that, eliminating carbs from your diet. Uh, there's some controversy about uh, gluten sensitivities. And I, I believe that only about 5% of the world may be actually affected by it. But most people can mentally tell themselves that they feel better by eliminating gluten. So I'm a fan of that. I, I try not to eat uh, wheat products. I try not to eat uh, sugar. Um, you know, if I get a little bit here and there, that's fine. And my sugars, as long as I'm staying away from fructose, I'm pretty happy about that. Um, so it's some very simple dietary principles that you that almost everybody can follow. Uh, I try not to snack. That's that's a big one for a lot of people. A lot of people when they're bored. Uh, you know, you'll see a smoker start smoking cigarettes. You'll see, you know, a lot of people will sit, you know, pull out their fish crackers and start throwing fish crackers up in their mouth. Um, and it's it's not because they're hungry; it's because they're freaking bored. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you can break that habit and be very conscious about it, you can really take yourself far. Uh, but I think of all of it, just. Hydration, man. Hydration, hydration, hydration. Drink, drink. Man, as a matter of fact, just talking about it, I'm going to take another <laughs> sip of water. But yeah, that's uh, I, I am a big fan of, of just drinking a lot of water. As a matter of fact, I don't drink anything other than water. So, uh, well, no, no, no. I take that back. I do drink a superfood that we call chocolate bliss, and that's just a little slice of heaven in a glass, but it's it's such a pain in the butt to make that uh, we make it here, but I, if, if you were to ask me on the interview, how you made it, how I made it, we take six or seven different ingredients, 
mix it all up and then make gallons of it at a time. So it's a very Baxter household kind of thing. But <laughs> it, that is, uh, but yeah, we, we enjoy that. And, um, so yeah, there we go. Do you think technology is going to help or hurt us in the long run? Um, there's two camps on this. Uh, I am a big believer in a, if, if I choose to allow technology to help me, then it's my choice. I don't want technology imposed upon me. Uh, that's not my choice. And I think that unfortunately that's coming down the pipeline. Uh, there's a lot of nanotech that, uh, I think can be used very maliciously, uh, in the wrong hands. And, and that I'm not a fan of. But when it comes to uh, some very smart people developing technologies that can take us much further, and if I electively choose to use that, I think it's a brilliant thing. And I love some of the minds that are coming out with some of this technology. Uh, everywhere from software to hardware, uh, there are just some neat things that were only 10, 15, 20 years ago only available to clinicians. And today, we have those that we can have in our homes and self-diagnose and self-treat. Heck, man, I can go to wellnessfx.com, get, for 350 bucks, get a complete lab workup, find where my deficiencies are, understand the blood work because they actually break it down. And if you do a little bit of studying and what the different uh, you know markers mean, you can essentially treat yourself better than a doctor treats yourself. How many times have you gone to a general practitioner? Oh, Mr. Baxter, you have a little sn you know, sniffly nose. Here, take, you know, take 10 Z packs, you know, let's go kill off your immunity. So you get rid of that little sniffly nose. Let's not find out what the root, you know, cause of it is. Well, by being your own doctor, understanding your own blood work, you can self treat yourself oftentimes better than any general practitioner can. And have many times have you gone to see a general practitioner and, you know, outside of the obvious, they said, well, I need to send you off to a specialist. Then they send you off to a gastro and you know, gastro and, whatever it is and they scope your stomach or you know whatever now with that being said there is one thing that i am an advocate for uh and that is uh you know especially when you're my age or older uh you know every five years or so get a colonoscopy you've got to get get yourself checked um i've done it i'm not afraid to admit it and i nor do i think and i'm actually proud of it because i think that you're smart if you say over 40 or, you know, they say 50, I say 40, uh, you get yourself checked every five years because, uh, you, the, that is one thing that you just don't, you won't feel it until it's too late. So that's, uh, I'm a big fan of that. Makes perfect sense. You know, it seems like there's not a ton of biohackers out there, but the ones that I can think of offhand are, you know, like your Tim Ferriss and your Dave Asprey. What do you think about the way that they approach biohacking? Seems to be a much more uh, different approach than what you're talking about. You know, yeah, your, I love those. Thoughts? Yeah, the, the, so my thoughts on those guys, I love them. They they were uh, my initial inspirations in this world. I still love what Dave. I listen to all of Dave Ashry's podcasts. Uh, I think that Tim Ferriss has gone a little mainstream, uh, and I think that's fine. I, I think he's a uh, he has influenced more people uh, than than I have. <laughs> so, I mean, total respect for the guy, massive respect for him. Dave Asprey, I think I'm still on, I think that my track is a lot along the lines of Dave Asprey. I think he's, uh, and I say this in a positive way. So don't, you know, that I think he's more anal when it comes to nutrition, but I think he, that's because he has to be, I think that for him, in order to, for him to be optimal, he has to be much more, uh, he has to be more anal about it. Uh, I have developed myself to having a very fast uh, metabolism now, so I don't I don't have to be that anal about it, and I stick to general guidelines, and that's pretty much that works for me. Yeah, it seems to me the one thing that seems kind of interesting is neither you know Dave Asprey or uh, or Tim Ferriss really ever talk about establishing a baseline with those types of labs. Which to me is really the essence of what biohacking really is. I mean, it seems like you can't really call yourself a biohacker unless you're establishing a baseline, like getting your you know gut biome and your metabolic tests and looking at those different markers, and then integrating some type of new biohack or supplement or herb or diet, whatever it may be, and then you know three or six months later retesting to see 
what kind of effect that biohack really did. To me, that's really what the essence of biohacking is, and I don't see enough people really talking about that. Oh, man, I, you and I are on that same page, and I, how could you know if what you're doing is affecting you unless you have it measured? You know, if you don't have a baseline, other than, you know, I think it's just using your own self-assessment without actual data I think that's more woo than, you know, having a witch doctor throw a bunch of, you know, salt around you and say the demons are gone. You know, I, I think it's just silly. And so I'm, I'm very much, I get my blood drawn every three months, man. I get my stomach scoped or my, not my stomach, I get my colon scoped, not for the biomarkers, but because if there's something there, it needs to, you know, I am just a big fan of data. I just want data. I, I am just a data data for and i'm not a math whiz or you know i didn't come I, man i barely got out of high school so it's not yeah you know, i mean it's i this this is a much later in life uh thing but you know i try to get my dad you know he's 67 years old i try to get him to do some of this stuff you know i want him to live to 90 but you know that generation they look at getting your own blood work and you know outside of a doctor is heresy you know it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy no, exactly. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. I feel like that's the one thing that's lacking with from like, you know, bulletproof coffee or the four hour body is that they're still generalized to, you know, based on the assumption that it's going to work for everybody. And there's there, there needs to be I think with biohacking, because I'm a real bit I'm a big proponent of this whole biohacking revolution. That's I think it's kind of happening right now. And I think over the next few years, it'll, it will probably manifest itself maybe into something else or a different term, but, but it's happening now where, like you said, people are starting to quantify, they're starting to look at their, their data, and they're starting to individualize um, everything about their lives, their diet and their exercise programs. And, um, and that's my problem with some of those more mainstream things is I feel like when people start to go mainstream with CrossFit and P90X and Bulletproof Coffee and all these different things, they lose sight of uh, what's really uh, important right now, which is individualization. We all have different DNA and different biomarkers and different gut bacteria and, you know, you name it. And without really looking at that, you're just guessing. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, the, the old saying is, you know, when you assume, you know, you make an ass out of you and me and, you know, I wish they had the same little saying for, you know, for what you just said, because that is, uh, you know, when you're guessing, you're just, you know, I mean, you're probably doing more damage to yourself than anything. That's uh, it. Would, it'd be fascinating if it'd be neat at one t at some point in time. And I would love to see technology get to this point. But uh, you know, instead of waiting two or three days for your blood test to come back with all the markers listed, if it happened in seconds, so you saw it right then and there, and then going from LabCorp or whatever, wherever you get your blood blood drawn, LabCorp is down the road from me. Uh, you could do it in your house. You could prick your finger and get your entire makeup. How cool would that be? Now that would be cool. So that's a. If you want to know where I want, you know, biohacking to go, I want to be able to prick my finger once a week and see what is going on with with me now. That yeah, would be cool. I think we're headed there. I think that probably in the next five years. I actually heard that I, there was something that uh, I was reading that was talking about. Um, some technology for diabetics, and it was saying that in the next five years, they're going to have this technology where they'll have this essentially a chip that will be, you know, living in the bloodstream of the of a diabetic, and will will sync with an app, and it'll tell a live readout of their glucose levels all day long. So there's no no more need to prick their finger or anything like that. They'll know real time. As long as that's elective for them, and they choose to have that chip in there. That's I'm totally fine with it. If it's forced upon them, that's I have an issue with that. So that's yeah, uh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, that's yeah. I don't know. You know, it's you know, just you know, get outside of religion. But you know, if you follow, I mean, I, at some point in time, I don't know. Where I think we're headed to. I think I think we're at a, at a crossroads with technology, and I think that there's going to be we either have to make the choice of forcing the elective process or I think a lot of stuff's going to be forced upon us. And I think that one of the things about the biohacking movement is we are freaking educating ourselves and we are getting a lot smarter than we ever have. And we're getting a lot more intelligent about who we are as people and how we work and how to make best make use of this tool, our bodies, 
our minds that that's you know been given to us i i just i don't think that i don't i think that there's going to be a point in time where there's a evolution revolution uh however you choose to look at it uh, of people like us you know talking more coming more out and just saying no to a lot of these ludicrous medical practices that's taken place uh i i think i think it's coming i think this biohacking movement uh i, I wish it would have been initially called you know self-optimization movement because that would have been accepted a lot more readily than biohacking <laughs> but that's uh hey it is what it is we can only you know we are making differences and moving forward so yeah you're right you know i agree with you 100 percent that i feel like this whole biohacking movement is really uh it's really happening right now because the information is just so pervasive right now you know i feel like more and more people uh know or are starting to learn more than what they assume their doctor was telling them to be the truth they thought that this was you know taking that medicine was okay or they thought that you know just treating treating symptoms um, was okay but now people are starting to learn a little bit more they're starting to self-educate and uh, and I think that's really powerful and that can be can be used uh, in a good way for uh, for the right things uh, but also at the same time if you have people out there looking to make money um, they can put out a lot of the wrong information and really um, create create a really nebulous environment for people to actually try to get the truth or the highest level of the truth. So I'm, I'm really um, I'm really grateful for us to be in this opportune time to uh, to be part of this biohacking movement uh, to see see massive changes in how people you know treat their own health and fitness. Yeah it's interesting how money corrupts. Uh, you know people say that and you know a lot of people don't realize how much it does but a lot of this tech I bought Oh my gosh! I'd probably embarrassed to say probably a hundred thousand dollars worth of health tech, and there is some of it that is just crap, and it's it's a money corrupts, and their sales message was good, and you know one of the nice things about being smart enough to test myself is you know realizing that it is just total crap, and then not being able to be able to get your money back that you know, kind of blows, but it's uh you know. We are at a good time. We're at a good time right now. So just to kind of wrap things up, what's one simple biohack you would res recommend all our listeners start with today? Uh, as little, as silly as it sounds, I think the, the Uber biohacks uh, are going to come from sleep and uh, water. So uh, upgrade your water. Uh, don't trust your tap. Uh, if money is an issue, uh, start with reverse osmosis. It removes fluoride. Uh, it, that's a good start. You can upgrade uh, to, you know, they're saying that the ultimate hydration pH is 8.4. Uh, so there's a lot of machines out there that'll take you up to 9, 9.5, 11.0. But if you can get a right around uh, 8.4, 8.5 pH, drink that between meals, drink 7.0 with meals. Uh, removing fluoride is a big deal. Remineralizing yourself uh, is a big deal. Sleeping. Uh, deeply and Delta. Uh, unfortunately, there's yet there's one testing system uh, called the Bedit B E D D I T, which is pretty okay uh, for measuring your sleep. There used to be Zio, but they went out of business, and I wasn't a big fan of the radio waves being attached to my head as I was sleeping at night. But it was uh, sleep is a big deal. One of the protocols that I use for a much better sleep at night. Uh, is I'll lay on what's called a spike mat for about 10 to 15 minutes before I fall asleep. Uh, TV is off usually about an hour before I fall asleep. I read. That's my reading time. Uh, so I'll be laying on my spike mat reading. Uh, and then I'll use uh, – this one is Woo. I will admit this uh, because I have no testing data on it. Uh, but I also use uh, magnets uh, through an earth pulse technology uh, under my bed. Uh, I – can't tell you if it works or not, to be quite honest with you. Um, so as long as I have that belief there, I'm also okay with the placebo effect. Uh, I believe that's a pretty powerful uh, effect as well. So uh, better sleep and better hydration uh, are the two. Those should be the first two biohacks you, anybody should. should. And it's, those, those are two biohacks that everybody can follow. Uh, and then follow that up by going into some nutrition technologies I think that if you have a good neurofeedback uh, trainer around you, uh, go pay the eighty to one hundred twenty dollars for a session. See how it affects your brain. Do twenty sessions is probably even better. Uh, 
and then you know start playing with you know I, well it, here we talked about it this entire time and i had to go mention it go get your blood work done yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that should be the first thing that you do you know 23 and me is awesome for dna analysis i'm a little upset that the fda has come down on 23 and me uh so they stopped uh doing the the dna markers for health mm-hmm. which was everything that i wanted so they're only doing the ancestral analysis uh there are some third party services uh, that will take that data and break it down for a detox profile and a couple other markers from a health standpoint. Uh, so that's cool. Um, so 23 and me, 99 bucks, uh, uh, wellness FX, and there's several blood analysis places that you can get your own blood work done. Uh, I get their premier premier. It used to be their performance profile. Uh, it's about 350 bucks. Uh, and you even get a doctor to work with you on, uh, analyzing the results if you want it. Um, not that every doctor I've spoken to hasn't said anything that I wasn't able to see from the results. Um, and read, read. I mean, expand your mind. Do, just do. Stop sitting in front of the boob tube for hours on end, just wasting your life away, being engulfed and en- enveloped in other people's stories. Be your own story. I mean, man, be your own story. So. That's, a, that's my party words, man. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. No, it was great. I really want to thank you again for joining us today on ExtraScribe Radio. Thank you, Keith. Uh, My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yep. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. If you haven't already, get your custom workout program by downloading the ExtraScribe app from the iTunes App Store today. 